This is not a county that is typically renowned for being a tourist hotspot in Ireland. But today we are about to prove that this little slice of heaven nestled along the wild Atlantic Way is definitely worth a visit. We believe that absolutely everything good about our little country can be found right here in County Sligo. We are Mark and Asia and welcome to Something to Remember. If you're new around here, make sure to check out our previous videos about Donegal, Mayo and our wee video about Asia's perspectives on Irish culture. Before we begin, we would love to say a big thanks to today's sponsor, Babbel. When traveling abroad, locals really appreciate when you come to their country and try to use some of their language. And let's be honest, it's not really that difficult to learn a few new words here and there. You don't really want to be going to a new country and have to play the standard game of charades that everyone has done in the past. For us, we are so grateful we used a language app called Babbel through our recent trip through Latin America where we really had to get a grasp of some Spanish. Within just three weeks of using the app, we were really confident to use our Spanish in real life situations. Tomamos el autobús aquí. With Babbel, you can easily learn the basics to get yourself through some sticky situations abroad. And if you want to further develop your skills, there really is no better app to do so. ¿Quieres desayuno? Babbel is one of the top language learning apps in the world with tailor-made lessons about relationships, business, travel and so much more. All of their lessons have been created by real language teachers and as a former English teacher myself, it really makes a difference when you have people that actually know what they're doing creating these lessons. So autumn is the season of learning and before you embark on your next trip, be it Spain, Germany, France, Brazil or beyond, do not head off without having a go at Babbel. If you use our link below, you will get a huge 60% off your subscription and what's even better is that there's a 20-day money-back guarantee as if that wasn't enough there is also two free classes with your subscription so it's a no-brainer really there are a few different subscriptions to choose from including a lifetime subscription which is of course our recommendation happy learning the first stop on our two-night three-day itinerary was a scenic drive along the coastal road towards Mullochmore Head as you gaze out at the stunning views surrounding Mullochmore Head your eye will no doubt be drawn to a picturesque castle that sits right at the top of the hill with the infamous Ben Bolben towering in the background classy Bon castle was built in the 19th century and perhaps its most famous owner was Louis Mountbatten who was very closely related to the British royal family Mountbatten spent his summers at the the castle until his death when his boat was blown up just off the shores by the IRA during the troubles in 1979. The castle itself is actually on private property so you can't go up to it but you can go to Mullamore Head to get a nice viewpoint of it and uh, yeah, it's a nice, nice wee drive around the coast. Next up was a journey inland towards the dramatic Dartry Mountains. We tried and failed to find what is locally known as the Magic Road where apparently if you take your handbrake off your car it'll naturally roll uphill but we didn't find it and maybe if you do know specifically where it is you can leave a wee comment and let us know where to find it next time. Anyway, the Glen of Horseshoe Valley is what we were really here for. This place is honestly like something out of a postcard. A short hike will take you to the top of this waterfall where we got gorgeous views of the valley, surrounding mountains and the Atlantic Ocean in the distance. There are actually a couple of different hikes you can do here. Another one is to Gjermud and Gronje's cave. We've seen some people hiking up to it and it looks very steep and to be honest it looks a bit dangerous but I'm not sure uh, if we'd recommend that but it's there and um, it would probably be a cool thing to do if you're here. The notion of Ireland being an insanely green country really lives up to the stereotype here as it's just green green, green and more green as far as the eye can see. From one waterfall to the next and our second hike of the day would take us to the stunning setting of the tallest waterfall in Ireland. The hike to the Devil's Chimney takes around 25 minutes. It is well signposted, you just have to follow the path through the forest and you will reach the foot of the waterfall. When we were walking through the forest it started raining but when we walked out it appears the sun started shining and now it's even hot here there was even a rainbow going through the water it was so beautiful and the place is stunning these mountains around the Glencar Lake I would highly recommend coming here when you're in Sligo if you're around this area you'll also be able to visit Glencar Waterfall but because this is a Sligo video and not a Leitrim video Glencar Waterfall isn't making it in
Mark, where are you going for a swim? There. This is gonna be really nice. I've done this before with my friend Beanie and Broccoli. Uh, friends Beanie and Broccoli. <laughs> Just look at the weather here. Completing two hikes in one afternoon had left our legs a wee bit heavy, so we decided there would be no better way to recover than to take a dip at Dead Man's Point in the choppy, freezing Atlantic Ocean. But don't worry, there was a method to our madness, as this is actually a very popular activity out on the pier at Russell's Point. For 12 beer of 50 each, you can enjoy the use of the hotbox sauna and leisurely hop between the sauna, plunge pool and of course the ocean. It is definitely a great way to shake off any stiffness you may feel from a hectic day like we had and it really set us up nicely for our next big adventure the following morning. This is Ben Boban. We've seen a fair share of iconic mountains on our travels and Ben Boban has always been on our to-do list as we have always found it to be incredibly spectacular. Today was the day we would finally stop gawking at this specimen of a mountain from the ground and take on the challenge of making it to the summit. Ben Boban is actually a non-attack. Now don't worry, that doesn't mean you're going to be getting chased by Sister Michael from the Dairy Girls. Non-attack mountains were formed during the last ice age and are peaks of rock that protruded through surfaces of ice or snow. After our our obligatory stop at a deli for breakfast, anyone that follows us will know just how much we love Irish delis, it was time to set off for Luke's Bridge, which would be the starting point of the hike. If you're coming from Sligo like we are to hike to the top of Ben Bulban, you'll see signs for Ben Bulban Forest Walk, and that's actually not the place you want to go. It's Luke's Bridge is the start of the hike, so it's important to remember that the Forest Walk is just a, a walk along the front of Ben Bulban to get a nice view of it from the bottom. We put our trust in the weather gods and thankfully later we would reap the benefits of good karma when it comes to the weather. Fortune favors the brave and all that. Oh, look at them. Oh, no. The first 45 minutes of the hike is pretty straightforward until you reach like the end of the path. And then because it's been raining quite a lot recently, it was quite a swampy area to get through. How would you describe this, Mark? Think Donkey and Shrek swamp kind of thing until we get to this ravine and our feet are wet but on my right your left is ben whiskin and on my left your right is ben bulban itself and when you get to this ravine the advice we've been given is to go to the top here and then walk along the top of ben bulban to get to the viewpoint of the other side so we're at the bottom and we're about to start what really is the beginning of the hike part of the walk so looking forward to it feet wet spurs high Honestly, it is quite a straightforward hike, but it does take the guts of two and a half hours to make it to the top. As Ben Bowman is a plateau mountain, there isn't really a traditional summit spot, and it's up to yourself to find the best view. For us, we made our way to the front of the mountain on the north side and perched along these jagged cliff edges for some lunch, absolutely blown away by the uniqueness of this experience. I don't know why I'm absolutely terrified. I think I, I don't have like fear of heights, but I don't know. It's, yeah. It's like being on a massive cliff, 500 meter one. I don't know, it's just way down there. She can't even speak English anymore, <laughs> that's how scared she is. It's mad when I think back to us driving here this morning like in those shots of the rain hitting the windscreen and Ben Bulbin looking taller than it's ever looked because you're about to climb it like it would have been so easy to find an excuse not to climb it but I think it's so spectacular and when you're at the top of these kind of things it's just it's just all worth it so just climb the f***ing mountain I'm gonna put that in a t-shirt just climb the mountain <laughs> On the way back down, we actually took a shortcut that took us back to the car in just over an hour, but it did involve quite a steep decline. By doing this, we also managed to avoid the wet, swampy area we struggled with on the way up. So, if you think you can manage the steep angle of the way down, then there are certainly benefits. Back in the car after the Ben Bulban hike, just some thoughts would be that it's not a difficult hike, but it's long, like it took us about four and a half, five hours. Uh, to go up and down. It's more just walking and walking through grassland. That's actually one of the good things about it. It's not 
like other mountain hikes where it would be sore on your knees and have like scree and concrete big blocks and stuff it doesn't have any of that it's just grass and marshland so if you're looking to get into hiking i'd say if you're just beginning it would be a good hike to start with because it's long a bit challenging not sore on the knees and uh, really really rewarding at the top Climbing mountains works up quite an appetite and there is one place in particular right in the heart of Sligo town that we get a tad bit too excited about visiting when we are there. So this place behind me has actually won awards for being the best burger in Ireland and actually made it onto a list of being one of the best burgers in the world as well and uh, if you come to Sligo don't eat anywhere else come to Flipside. Locally sourced beef and chicken burgers, the freshest local veg and homemade signature sauces all brought together with a selection of herbs and spices make for an unforgettable Forgettable burger experience. No worries. The chicken is so so good. After three hikes in two days, we had earned the right to a few pints, and Sligo genuinely has some of our favourite bars in Ireland. Some of the best authentic Irish bars include Shoot the Crows, Foley's, McGlynn's, Hargadins, and a personal favourite, Thomas Connolly's. Connolly's is the oldest bar in Sligo and if you are a fellow Guinness lover, this is the place for you. If you're not into Guinness, I say I really like the MacIver cider they have on draft there. To be honest, it's a wee bit annoying to think that a huge percentage of tourists that visit this country are sitting in places like Temple Bar in Dublin instead of getting a real Irish experience in proper bars like these instead. And if live music is your thing, you can check out a handy wee website called sligomusicians.com to check out the upcoming gigs for the week in the town. They have information on upcoming gigs, trad sessions, open mic nights, all that kind of stuff. This is a concept we love, so if your town, city, village has something like this, we would love to hear about it. Let us know in the comments below. Right, so the last day didn't quite go as planned. Oh, so we got very lucky yesterday with the weather, and we had a perfect day on the top of Ben Bulban. And today we were going to try to go to Keshkaran Caves and Eski Castle but it looks like it's not going to clear up but we're going to grab some breakfast and if it does clear up we're going to go, if not, next time. Alas, we had such a good couple of days in Sligo and if you do manage to make it to the Keshkaran Caves and Eski Castle we would love to hear about your experiences. Now we know we said at the end of the last video that the next video would be Kerry but we do promise that the next video definitely is Kerry. Meanwhile, if you like this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you go to Sligo, we know you're going to have something to remember, just like us.